Let's talk about the next day in Dallas. Uh, where were you at the time of the assassination? Of assassination? I was, uh, I'd packed my car to go to Austin for the big fundraiser. And uh, they were having a meeting of the Democrats down the old red courthouse. And they were fussing, they were, some of them were highly uh, disenchanted about uh, John Kennedy coming to Texas. And so here they were wrangling, which was very common. So me, I was lighthearted, and I said, hey, guys, I'm going on to Austin. I'll see you guys in Austin tonight, and I blew him a kiss. I walked out of the Red Courthouse, and we didn't have all the parking problem. I get in my automobile. You could hear the parade, the noise from the parade. I drove across the Houston Street Viaduct in order to hit the, the highway to go to Austin. And impulsively, I said, I won't have time to have my hair fixed in Austin, so I'll go by, uh, let's see, was it Fair uh, Teiches, the beauty salon and get my hair freshened so I could go on to Austin. And again, it's about maybe 10 minutes or less trip from the Red Courthouse. And as I walked in the door, they were already on the television that he had been shot. So uh, I asked if I could use the phone. I called. I knew if anything, anyone knew anything, it would be just Kellum in Austin because they carried all three networks. So I called Jess and I said, what is going on? First, I called Lou Sterrett at downtown. And I said, my God, what has happened, Lou? And here are people that should have been out at the trademark for the lunch, but they were still downtown. And he said, well, they just shot that SOB. And uh, maybe Lyndon. Well, when when Lou told me it was Lyndon, of course it was very upsetting. And I didn't live all that far from the uh, where I had my hair fixed. Jess from my house. I said, Jess, what is going on? And uh, he told me at that time. He even said that he was sure he had passed away. Or was you you thought he was talking about Johnson? Yeah, but uh, well, yeah, but I had already verified that it was not Lyndon; okay. it was John Conlon and uh, Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the night before when when Johnson came out of the meeting. Uh, what did he say to you? He was so angry. He had a violent temper when he was upset. Well, let's use the, the exact words that he said to you. What did he say he, to you? He, uh, he grabbed me by the arm and he had this deep voice and he said, after tomorrow those SOBs will never embarrass me again. That's no threat. That's a promise. And it, it startled me really, you know, because he was so ruddy faced and I thought oh well, he really uh, something went on that shouldn't have gone on, you know. But uh, he called me from the Texas hotel the next morning as I was going downtown right. and hear this screaming voice of his. Uh, he was so irate, and uh, he did didn't say? give me—he didn't give me time to talk to him. You know, he just uh, he was still angry. And when I talked to just kill him right after that, I said, "Wow, he's on a real." violent binge, you know. And then I passed it off. I said, well, after tonight at the Driscoll, he'll be all right. Yeah. And, of course, I didn't see him again until... But what were the words he said to you over the phone? That, uh, that they would never embarrass him again. The, that SOB, the Irish Mafia, I think. He referred to him as the Irish Mafia very often. But he said they would never embarrass him again? I'd never embarrass him again. There was no threat. That was a promise. And there were violent feelings that have never been told that was between those two people. There was a picture in the Associated Press that showed uh, Ralph Yarbrough, John Conley, uh, Lyndon Johnson standing behind Kennedy. At, at the Texas Hotel. Right. And yeah, uh, if you look at the, at the look on Johnson's face, what, what's oh, your impression? His, his face is snarling. Yeah. And John Connolly is so worried or concerned. And after Air Force One got to Love Field, you see John Connolly coming down. Everyone was full of glee. And John Connolly has this faraway look. 